Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. I am really, really excited to talk to this guest, not only because she's amazing, but because this topic, as you guys pointed out to me many times privately, is a really, really big one on people's minds. So how we're going to talk about healing your relationship to money and how you can reclaim your power with the one and only Darcy Elizabeth. What's up, Darcy? How you doing? Hey, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to have you on the show. And I, like I said, this topic couldn't be any more timely. I think a lot of people have a messed up relationship with money. Um, and there's all sorts of ideas as to what, how to fix that. And I'm hoping you can help us heal a little bit. Uh, before we get into that, tell them a little bit about you. Tell the audience uh, who you are and kind of how you got to this place where you can even talk about healing your relationship. Yeah. yeah, it's so important. It's actually the question I get most from people coming into my community because they're like, how did you get here? Where did you you know, bridge these money and the energetic aspects of these two together? So my background is I'm a CPA, so a certified professional accountant. And I worked for over a decade in the finance industry. So I was an auditor, finance manager. I did all the financial things. Wow. So that's, I have a very technical background when it comes to money. And so a few things shifted for me as I started to, as I really, when I became a mother, something just kind of shifted in me. And I thought, I really want to start my own business. I really want more than, you know, what I have currently when it comes to my career and my work. And, you know, I started to kind of delve into a few different things. So I started to look and find energy healing. I started to find topics and resources around this energetic aspect of myself and really the spiritual aspect of myself. And as I started to dive in there, <clears throat> excuse me, I immediately wanted to dive in and I had an epiphany one day as I'm struggling with my own relationship to money. So seven years ago, my husband and I were frustrated because we kept thinking, okay, I want to start my own business. I want to quit my job. We want to go travel the world. We want to do all these things. And we're waiting for money to come first before we can do it. You know, we're waiting for our debt balances to go down. We're waiting, you know, for that money to, you know, big inflow to come in so we can, you know, take off running towards our dreams. And as I started gaining more of these kind of energetic spiritual tools, I started to think, okay, how can I apply these to my relationship to money? Because I had all the practical tools, CPA. I know what I'm doing when it comes to money. Yeah, and I mean, if anybody had the tools, you had the tools. Yes. And multi-million dollar companies I'm managing and I'm very, very good at what I do practically. And leaving myself, you know, leaving feeling really frustrated that I couldn't figure it out for myself. I couldn't figure out how to, you know, amass the amount of, you know, money I thought I needed in order to quit my job and, you know, travel the world and do all the things I wanted to do. And so as I began to find these tools, I started to learn about money mindset. I started to learn about, okay, maybe there are beliefs that we picked up in childhood that are causing me to react, causing me to take action, you know, as an adult from what I learned when I was young. So I started to apply those to myself to figure out, okay, well, why can't I seem to create, you know, a nest egg and savings? And why can't I seem to pay down my debt? Wow, as I is that on everybody's mind, right? Because yeah. I think people, it's funny when the commercials come on, I've had people I've been watching TV with, they're like, God, I can barely keep my checkbook balance, let alone have uh, some a nest egg or uh, money for a rainy day or listen to some of those professional uh, money advisors who say, well, you should have two to three months salary, la, la, la. There's People get frustrated. So what they do is they just check out. They don't even pay attention because they feel like they're already so far behind the eight yes. ball. They don't know how to yes. dig themselves out of it. Totally. And, you know, when we can start and what I did personally to look at, okay, well, why am I not comfortable in receiving and having this nest egg? Why am I more comfortable in a lack kind of, um, you know, is it hand to mouth? I think, you know, kind of situation where I don't have anything left over at the end of the month. And why is my body more comfortable there? And you start to kind of peel back the layers and to see why. And nine times out of 10, it's, you know, from what you experienced as a child. So I took myself through that process 
And after healing my relationship to money, which I say is never ending, it's not done. Um, I decided to bridge kind of those two gaps and start a business where I'm supporting other people with that process. So I have practical tools. I have energetic tools to help people really see why, why they're doing what they're doing with money. And that's, you know, that's my origin story. That's why I started this business was I took myself through this process. I love that you've been through it. And that give to me, that gives you so much uh, credence and kudos and credibility uh, because I think a lot of people that come out and talk, they have not been through it. You actually dealt with it, dealt with the dance with the devil, tried to figure out um, how best to do it. What are some of the things that you see, some of the really big mistakes that people make? And mistakes might be the wrong word. You can tell me from an energy perspective. Yeah. Um, what What they do, what they're doing wrong that doesn't allow them to create that nest egg, create that the finances and have a, a positive relationship to money. So what I typically see is we're looking at what your emotional relationship to money, what that relationship looks like. So when I am working with someone who's having a hard time moving out of a pattern of not being able to save or not having anything at the end of the month, you know, we're looking at that pattern where, how is that pattern actually serving them and how are they relating to it on an emotional level? Because when you think of the emotional triggers that come up frequently, maybe it's an argument with a partner or um, a gut, you know, emotional reaction when you go to check your bank account balance, pay a statement, pay your credit card, looking at those as clues rather than trying to bypass them. So that's the biggest thing I see people is trying to shove those emotional reactions down, trying to bypass them, trying to stuff them. Maybe it's alcohol, um, just ignoring them completely and trying to find ways to actually deal with them in a healthier way and look at those emotions as guideposts, as messages for you as you kind of dive into your relationship to money because they're going to keep coming up and up and up until yeah. they're dealt with. They're not going anywhere. They might show up in a different way, but those emotional reactions, those triggers aren't actually going to go anywhere until you know you see them for what they are and what they want to tell you. So in your opinion, your experience, yeah. um, does coming from a perspective of lack versus abundance make a difference? Yes. So, you know, when we're looking at for many people, because if someone was raised in a very abundant household where things were plentiful, they're probably not even interested in looking at their relationship to money. So probably everybody here is, you know, more looking at it from a lack perspective because that's what right. they were shown as a child. And, you know, our from birth to age seven is very formative years. We're like sponges at that age and we're just absorbing everything around us. So, when we think of this kind of lack perspective, a lot of us, it's ingrained literally in our body. The emotional aspect, the patterns, those beliefs are just sitting there and they're actually dictating the action we take now in adulthood. Even if it looks differently than your parents or caregivers, it's actually a lot of very similar themes when you get down to the emotional component. Fascinating. All right, so tell us what some of the emotional components are. What is it that we are beating ourselves up, not doing right, not thinking right, not focusing right? I know that I can usually tell someone who comes from a place of lack versus abundance overall, not just money, pretty quickly. The energy is completely different. Yes. The person's approach, their facial expressions, their aura, their body language, it is completely different, guys. I know you. some of you go, Ted, that can't be possible. I'm telling you, when somebody sits in front of me and they're in a place of lack and that's how they live their lives, you can tell the difference. Yes. And it's the lens in which they view life through. You can even kind of think of it as like glass half full versus glass half empty. It's the lens in which they view life and it, it affects the words they speak, the thoughts they think, the way that they the perception that they have around the situations that are happening. And you can even see somebody go through the exact same almost scenario 
and someone with more, you know, lack mindset versus abundance mindset are going to move through that experience and take action very differently. And that's kind of the key of being able to come into a grounded space when it comes to your relationship to money and look at that, the root of that lack mentality. So if it comes from childhood, like we've, you, you've mentioned, yep. if, it, if most of it does, this is how we learn, right? And then we don't yep. realize how much we carry from that into our adult lives. But if it comes, if it comes from childhood, what are some things that people can do to reclaim the power? How can they get it back? What are some steps that they can take to really, first of all, a lot of people have to evaluate and realize that's the issue. Because we're blaming everything else, everything else, the economy, uh, what's going on in our lives, the relationship, the bank, it's every, it's always something else instead of getting to the nitty gritty. So what can people do to, once they realize, all right, I'm gonna listen to Darcy. I think she's right. What are some of the steps they can take? Yeah, so, you know, the first thing is really taking radical responsibility for where you are now. So while, yes, you might have had a parent or caregiver that had a very lack mentality, it's knowing that while you can't change the past, right now where you stand today, you can decide to take yourself somewhere as you move forward into the future. So while that seems small, that piece of radical responsibility, accepting where you are, that it isn't now in your hands, if you decide to move forward is huge. If you aren't taking full responsibility for that, there's actually no moving forward in a different direction. So once you take that radical responsibility, it's allowing yourself to open up to a new way forward with money. And that can start for a lot of people, that's just starting with journaling, um, starting to think about, okay, how do my parents or caregivers, how did they react You know, when it comes to money? You can even look at how they react now. What kind of beliefs do they carry about money? Why do I believe what I believe, you know, about money. Why do I believe that? Why do I believe or, you know, think in a certain way when it comes to wealth, when it comes to how I receive? So when we're looking at how these beliefs are affecting the very decisions you make that create the financial re reality before you, they start to drive that inner journey and the inner journey of looking at and starting to question and push back on the thoughts that come through. So for a lot of people, I, you know, I recommend journaling and then I recommend just paying attention. So what thoughts are you thinking when it comes to money? What words are you saying when, you know, you get the bill in the mail? Are you like frustrated and cursing it? Or are you like, okay, cool. I have power in my house and I love that I'm able to, you know, receive the money I need to pay for it. And just starting to shift yourself in really small ways can make a huge difference in how you approach money. And of course, it's more of the surface level. You can go so much deeper, but if you're just starting out, just journaling and paying attention to what you're saying and what you're thinking are huge indicators to what the beliefs are underneath the surface. I have uh, had a conversation recently with someone um, that I know incredibly well. And they, I finally said to them, why is it always that you are waiting for the money to dry up? Because mm. people actually live like that. Yes. They believe pay, it's either the paycheck to paycheck scenario, or they believe that if they don't do a certain thing, the money will dry up. Or if they get a, the bonus, they're not happy with it. So they've, they don't understand the power of those words putting out there how yes. if they're unhappy. And so <clears throat> I have found that people really don't know how to identify that that's how they are. Because like you said, from childhood, this has been a learned behavior, a learned reaction to money. And so for mm -hmm. people to say out loud in their minds, they think, well, if I say it's not enough, more will come. And that's really the opposite of the way things work, right? Yes. And, you know, it's about being able to step outside of yourself, like you said, and move into a state of fluidity regarding what you hold to be true about money. And, you know, as you're saying, like, even trying to manipulate their thoughts to, 
you know, try to have a different action come. Recognizing that also your thoughts are more fiction than fact. You actually can step outside of yourself and see your thoughts as not a part of you because they aren't. Right. They're, you know, your thoughts aren't truth in a sense. They're just kind of this running script that's going on. And when you can kind of step outside of yourself and look at your thoughts as more fiction than fact, you can start to bring the awareness needed to shift that. And really just, it's like the neutral observer, you know, not judging the thoughts that come through, just getting curious, like, oh, okay, when this happened, or I saw so-and-so run through my Facebook feed, and I thought they were showing off, or I thought, like, oh, how do they, how can they afford that, or whatever the thought might be, just stopping being like, oh, that's interesting, that thought just popped through immediately. And no judgment. There's nothing wrong with you. You're you know, perfect the way you are. But just starting to bring more awareness to what's going through without any judgment. And when you can do that, you start to separate yourself from believing that everything that runs through your mind is fact and can start to you know almost open up a doorway to where your beliefs are more malleable in a sense, where you can start yes. to shift. I think it's amazing too when people say, um, "Oh God, you know, I'm just, I'm just. This is how I am with money. Uh, this is, this is how it's always been. This is how my parents were. Yeah. Uh, and they, they don't run their lives as if they are expecting anything to be different, and yet they want it to be different." Yes. So it's the attitude, right? So it's the attitude, it's the thought process, the mindset, I think is really the better word. Um, but people feel funny or hokey, I've heard, or cheesy when they say some of the, I'll use the word affirmation, you haven't used that yeah. yet, but I'll use it, affirmations. Um, and they, they feel uncomfortable. Well, tell them that that's okay, right? I mean, in the beginning, you're not, it's not something we're used to saying out loud or speaking into existence, uh, we're yes. used to accepting and talking negative, not positive. Yes, and that's a great point. I love that you shared that. So when you're starting to talk differently, when you're starting to think differently, of course it's uncomfortable because you've been, you've always been in your comfort zone when it comes to money. Yeah. So when you think of, you know, change and growth are outside of your comfort zone. So when you're looking at your relationship to money, you know, you kind of want to get a little uncomfortable. You want things to feel a little different because where you're, where you are now, that comfort level is keeping you in the same patterns. You're going to keep seeing the same patterns and not that they're wrong, but if you want to experience something else, you have to change something, you know, whether that's, you know, your, your actions, but also in line with that, your thoughts, your beliefs, and allowing those to be aligned together because otherwise you're going to just keep seeing the same things over and over and over again. So yes, it is uh, uncomfortable as you start to move through this work. And it's especially uncomfortable as you start to dive in through the emotional aspects, but there's so much more on the other side and there's so much, you know, such a different experience that you can have as you move through that. And it's allowing that to be bigger than the dis the temporary discomfort. So true. All right, so before we head out, people asked about energy healing, energy, you mentioned it, uh, but of course people do their due diligence and they looked you up when I tagged you. Uh, tell us a little bit about what that is. I was blessed enough to experience that. We had a great session. I don't remember when that was, right? It was been a year while. Ago. Yes. And it's amazing. Like during the really height of the pandemic. Yes. Um, tell us what energy energy healing, energy work actually means. Yeah. So when we're looking at, especially when we're looking at energy work in relation to your relationship to money, it's looking at the subconscious aspects of your relationship to money. So you, we can see, hopefully we can all see that we're more than just bodies, you know, whether it's a soul or a spirit, there's more to us than our physicality. And we're looking at that aspect of it. We're looking at how our body holds our emotions, how our body is holding um, experiences, even when you think of trauma on the body and how we can see, you know, science can back up that trauma affects our DNA. And that emotional aspect actually shifts our bodies and affects generations from the person who started I with agree. 
the trauma, it, they can see that the DNA is still altered, you know, multiple generations down. So when we're looking at that, when we're talking about energy, we're actually working with the body to see what it's holding on to. We're giving it permission to shift and change. And of course it takes an open mind. You know, if this isn't a mainstream concept, so this isn't something that we hear about often, but when you start right. to experience it, you start to feel the change that it can have. No, there's no one that's not a believer once you can experience what this work does, whether it's through meditation, whether it's, you know, through something like Reiki, or there's all kinds of energy healing modalities, you can start to feel the shift in your body. And, you know, I do that through money. So I'm using kind of those tools and helping people actually shift their body um, when it comes to their relationship to money on this un very unseen level. So it takes, you know, faith. Faith is the best way to describe it. End of that. All right. How do people reach you? They want to learn more. They want to learn about how they can heal their relationship to money. What's the best way for them to reach out to you? Yes. So I have today, I'm actually launching my book and e-course, um, more Ooh. money, more power question mark. Have it right here. And oh, let's put you front and center. Hold on. Put here. that back up. There we Look go. That. This nice. bad boy's released today. So that's exciting. I'm so excited. So it is a guide to help you look at your relationship to money and begin to shift it. So obviously there's lots of information in the book itself, but there's an e-course, a free e-course attached with it that it has guided meditations. So it actually takes you through the energy work. You can go through yourself. It's a self-paced course to take the information in the book and help you put it into action so that you are starting the book and ending the book in a completely different fashion when it comes to you and your so relationship cool. to money. So cool. All right. Darcy Elizabeth.com, right? Yep. So Best if you go there, go. yep. There'll be a banner at the top and you can click there and grab the book. If you're interested. You're awesome. Come back anytime. I'd love Me to do too. some more energy work. That was yes. fun. When we, um, I just think it's so important for people to embrace this. And I feel like 2020 helped people with the shift, realizing that things weren't always going to be like they thought they were. So they needed to figure out other ways to accomplish what they wanted. And yes. energy work is definitely one of them. You're a joy. Thank you, Darcy, for you being too, on the show. Ted, thank, you so much. Good. thank you. All right. Go reach out to her. Karen Glenn says she's so excited to get her copy. Yay. I don't know if you know her. <laughs> awesome. Karen. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Reach out to Darcy, darcyelizabeth.com.